How has she influenced me? Um, you know, well, you you're right. And you know, so in the way that <laughs> in the, this isn't a gotcha question. No, so this. exactly. And I'm glad you said that. Yeah. So that's how. What? <laughs> So excited to welcome Chris Olson to the Checkup Podcast. In this talk, we discuss so many juicy details. His flight fuel and how it got started. That's his coffee brand. How he became best friends with Megan Trainer and how he's about to go on vacation with her. We even discuss his intimate health history. He shares some very juicy details, not just about his physical health, but his mental health as well. There's a lot of good stuff to learn in this podcast. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Well, to start, I have to say I'm incredibly disappointed. Oh, I know why already. No way. <laughs> because I didn't bring you a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, where's my backpack? I have a, I, I, I do. No, yeah. no, well, I don't, no, I don't want to hand like me down not, coffee. Unfortunately, it's, are you going to give me your used coffee? Now. No, um, no, 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 you no. drank the coffee and then you were going to give it to me. No. Well, I mean, that makes it more valuable. Some could argue. Enlighten me. Why? Yeah. <laughs> because I, because it's my coffee company and I've taken a sip out of it. Like that's really powerful coffee. In You're saying coffee. if I was interested in the cloning experience. Yes. Uh, Which okay. I would think as a, I think you are. You do. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> it's just a read I get. Really? Like, yeah. A doctor who posts, like who, who shares much of his journey on social media. Mm -hmm. That guy wants to clone people. Wow. You you have me pegged as evil doctor then. No, no, no. Evil. I you know, I think I think you would have a lot of good intentions. It would probably uh, go wrong, but you would have a good heart at the beginning of it. Got it. So mm -hmm. it's like bad outcomes from good intentions. Hundred percent. I will give you my word, not cloning you. Okay. Heard. But still upset that I don't have <laughs> flight fuel in my hand right now. I can't believe I yeah, right. I, I dropped the ball on that one. Um, but it is but I will get you some, but you'll have some that's not take even I that I haven't even taken a sip out of. I had one earlier because I felt like you might forget about. Me. Oh my god! So you knew I had an inkling, just okay. like you thought I was the evil doctor. Right. I thought I wasn't on the tier right. level of celebrity that would get. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, I forgot it. Uh, so, <laughs> well, well, I don't have a coffee cup to back to back me up. Okay, there. no, it's okay. So, Let, let's okay. skip this awkward Great. intro because I feel bad. Uh, no, torturing I, you I don't feel this. bad. I, well, um, hmm? What? Go on. No, sorry. <laughs> um, how did that start? How did you decide I'm going to get coffee with people? Oh, well, it didn't really start. It didn't start in the way that it is now. Like I was in a relationship at the time doing these TikToks mm -hmm. and I was going across the country on a trip and I was like, maybe it would be funny if I like texted him, I'm going to go get coffee. And then I go get coffee across the country. Oh. So I was like, I was going and getting it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Then eventually uh, along the line, it came, it became me delivering it to him. And then we broke up. And so I was like, what do I do with this? What do, what do I do with all of my content actually? But also with <laughs> this bit. Instead of thinking what to do with my life post breakup, you're like, what do I do with this? Specific no. So right. Right. So I was, I, I actually, yeah, no, no, no. So, so I was feeling all of the things, but sure. also once the, once I was thinking about uh, TikTok too. I was like, oh, I loved that thing. Um, I want to keep doing it. And so I did it with my dad a few times. People love the dad ones. Really? Okay. And then eventually I, I, uh, I was like, I, it, it kind of died because I was like, I don't really know where else to go with this. Sometimes a bit has run its course and you got to let it die. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Megan Trainer asked me to do her podcast. I said, yes. And she was like, would you, can you bring some TikTok ideas? It's like, I haven't done that in a while the coffee one in a while. Why don't I do that to her? So she was kind of the first celebrity that I did it with mm. that kind of like gave it its new life yeah. because then it was, then anytime I was working with anyone else, I was like, Kim, this is kind of the video. It's like such an easy format yeah, and it takes no time for the other person. Mm -hmm. it takes a lot for me, but like no time for the <laughs> sure. other person. So I was like, uh, so I've started doing it with more and more people Exactly. And then, yeah, like I feel like I felt like after I did it for Austin Butler at the Elvis premiere, it the doors were opened. It felt like that was like a really big one that was like, OK, now we can now I can kind of keep playing with it and keep having a thing. And about a year ago is when I had the idea for the brand of it, because mm. I was like, I feel like there's something here. Everyone also every, like people ask me where the best coffee is. Everyone wanted to be a part of the bit in some way. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I think there's something here. I love coffee. I drink it very often. Um, I would love to have something that felt very connected to me. And so, and I called it flight fuel. 
to be connected to the bit as well. I mean, it's probably one of those, I guess we can say, influencer products that makes the most sense. Oh, thank you. Well, you see like hot ones, create a spicy. You're like, right. obviously. Absolutely. Yeah. I like, see yours. Of course. Yeah. I wasn't going to like come out with a makeup brand or I mean, um, like you, you that's, can. I could, but that doesn't fit exactly into yeah. my content. And, and it, it's it's also like, in, and people go on business ventures that doesn't exactly fit into their content and that's not a bad thing at yeah. all. But um, I wanted to do one that felt very close to home. Very organic. So that's where I went. Is the coffee that. organic? Because that would be even extra organic. Yeah. So double organic. Yeah. Wow, that's good. Sourced from... Yeah, so, where's the best coffee? You 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 mentioned that. You said people ask me where the best coffee is from. Where's the best oh, coffee from? Oh, well, the actual beans are sourced from Central South America for okay. the most part, with some of them being from Asia and Africa. But um, the best, like, if I were to go and get a coffee, flight fuel, but because um, I have to. But sure. in in New York, I would go to. There's a really great place in the West Village called Rosecrans, mm. which is great. I love that one. Um, uh, devotion coffee because they do a very fun thing where they like you there it's like beans in argentina to being in your cup in l like a week wow so it's very fresh very fresh um so that's my favorite and then i i don't know those those seem to be the best for me and what York. about do you have a favorite bean, what about bean location oh. bean location i think most of them tend to be in like central south america do you know like if i was best. like Here's three cups, different geographies. Can you name No, them? I'm not going to know where on the, okay. in the world they're from. Okay. I, I cannot count myself up to that big of an expert. Okay. I will be able to tell the differences in the taste of them and tell you where what notes are coming out in okay. each one. Really? Okay. I mean, when you're you starting a, a brand, they have to, like, you have to try a cat, like a lot of different mm -hmm. blends um, to find out what you like, to yeah. find out what feels good. And so like over a few days, my friend came over and we tried, like we did a few different, a few different blends every day, mm -hmm. trying it like in a pot, trying it as espresso, trying it over iced oat milk, all of the things. Yeah. Um, we we're very caffeinated those days, wow. but you have to try all of them. And so eventually you kind of walk away from that experience getting like, okay, now I, I can tell pretty easily what, Kind of like what I enjoy from a Is it coffee. like the wine tastings where they taste, they, you know, splish it in their mouth and then yes. spit it out? You're supposed to like slurp it kind of mm -hmm. so it hits all different points of your yes, mouth. Exactly. Um, and so you can really like get everything out of it. Yeah, it is kind of like a wine. And you're supposed to spit it out. I wasn't spitting the coffee okay. out. Interesting. Are you supposed to spit wine out at a wine I, tasting? I think if you like the judges, they spit it out because then they would just well, get blasted it, yeah, by the yeah, last one like, and pick the last one every right. time. No, but and so I think with coffee, because you're not getting drunk, I think it's okay to maybe but swallow I mean, it. But I mean, for your heart, I get worried. Well, as a doctor, I'm sure. A lot of What's like, do you know what the limit? Yeah. What is it? I mean, recommended mm -hmm. maximal intake is 400 milligrams per day. Oh, and how, and one cup. Is about 150, right? I would say give or take 100, depending on is it drip? Is it Nespresso? Oh my God, we're thing? fine. However, Who's there are people we? out there. Like we, me, you, everyone in the room. What do you mean? I drink a lot. Probably a lot. No, I'm joking. Not do you much. surpass the limit, doctor? No. Do you know Starbucks? Blonde Roast, you've heard. Very caffeinated. Their tallest one. What is the tallest one called? Uh, Aventi. No, the one above. Oh, is it? Trenta. Maybe the Trenta. I don't think you can get Trenta in a hot drink, though. Oh, then, okay, maybe it's the Venti. Venti. I think 20 ounces. That Tw makes it sense. It is 20 ounces. Venti, 20, duh. I should have known that. Come on. You the got The Latin this. background right. my medical knowledge is weak. Okay. So 20, blonde roast, plain. Mm -hmm. Guess how many milligrams of caffeine? 300. 250. Close to 400. What? And then people throw espresso shots into that bad boy. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. And now you realize okay. why I have so many patients. Yes. Also, because also pre-workout, I think a lot of the a time lot. has 300 milligrams of caffeine. I mean, caffeine some in. of them have mega doses. Whoa. I mean, KSI was just here. He was drinking his prime energy drink right. and has 200. Okay. I mean, you have one of those and then a blonde roast. Like you're in a you're done. unhealthy dose. You're done for. Yeah. I had well, no not done for. I don't want to well, scare oh, people. Right, right, right. You're fine. And you're going to live a long <laughs> life time <laughs> um yeah that's that's no that's a lot i i i usually limit myself to about two cups a day oh so you're in a good but spot. it's also and it's also usually like um like an espresso drink or something okay. like that an espresso also i know has usually less caffeine then mm -hmm. 
uh, uh, drip coffee or yeah. a cold brew, though I do love a cold brew. It depends who's cold brew, but again, it's right, like it's right, all messy. Okay. That's okay, right? And yeah, yep, do you yep. know um, what's your take on the hydration status of coffee as uh, a coffee person? I always. I don't. I don't know what my take is on it, but well, if someone I says, do know like, what I do. If someone drinks coffee, do you think it's hydrating or dehydrating? I would imagine it's not that hydrating. Why? Because my mouth is usually a little more dry after I've drank coffee. I what I always do in the morning is I drink coffee and then I immediately drink like twenty four ounces of water. Okay, that's right good. after. Why after? Why not before? Um, sometimes it's before. Um, before is ideal. Oh, why? The first thing you want to consume in the morning is, is water. ideally water, yeah. Just well, most of the time it's a bagel. Mm. <laughs> I read a sign the other day that said a New York City bagel contains up to a quarter to half a loaf of bread. That's Isn't that bonkers. Great. That's great. great. I, well, that's for a, whom? Uh, <laughs> the one who's who wants the bread. That's a lot of bread. And that's me. Um that's a lot. That is a lot of bread. I I'll should give have fact checked the sign. I'll give you that. Yeah, you you should have fact checked it because it was at JFK. It was at JFK. Yeah, where? Like on the where they have the departure arrival thing, and they just was it was fun facts about New York. I don't believe it was you. like a Snapple cap. You think I just pulled this? Out of thin air? <laughs> I think you're lying. No, 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 I swear this this popped up. Show me it, a picture. It's really interesting. I didn't take a picture of it. Yeah, yeah. So it didn't happen. Convenient. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I'm exposed. Okay. Yeah. I that. That does kind of make sense because the bagels here are hearty. Yeah, and they're, they're also hearty. dense. They're dense. Um, but no, I I, I drink, I, I do get my water in in okay. the morning. But so you would say it's dehydrating because of the way it makes you feel. Yeah, I don't actually know. I do know my mom told me, you can tell me if this is true. Ooh. My mom told Fact me when I was growing up mom. that um, when that I, can't, I could never have coffee on an empty stomach because it'll give me stomach ulcers. And so I have, I never do that. And I also tell my friends anytime they, they're like, they just wake up and they start drinking their coffee. I'm like, you can't stop your stomach. So I always at least eat my bagel before I drink my coffee. <laughs> That's good. A lot of people do intermittent fasting and drink their coffees. So they do that. Um, the reason why that thought came about, and it's not a terribly inaccurate thought. It's just not obviously guaranteed. She probably saw it at JFK. You know, JFK is like the worst spreader of <laughs> yeah. potential misinformation. She probably saw it in a sign that was next to like the arrivals departures. Fun facts about New York. You'll get stomach ulcers if you drink your coffee. I have to fact check it. Okay, <laughs> great. So when you drink caffeine, your body naturally secretes more acid in your stomach. It induces acid secretion. Secretes. You like that word? Yeah, that's, that's quite the word. Yeah, it's a medical word. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about it. Right. Secretes. I, I'm going to start using that more. Give me a, a sentence just, yeah. of secretes. Well, all of the things that are coming into my <laughs> mind are not safe for work. <laughs> And I don't know what I don't know what level this podcast is rated at. Coffee, okay. sorry, okay. Coffee, coffee right. hydrating. Um, coffee is Body mostly acid. Yes, yes. But coffee is mostly acid. Water. Oh, <laughs> you were, did you just say coffee is acid? Well, isn't it acidic? Slightly. Period. And what? <laughs> and is it bad to drink? So yeah. No, it's not no, bad no. to drink. We have to. Drinks. No, no, we have okay. to talk about that acid thing because I get really excited about it, but. With coffee specifically, it has majority of it is water, mm -hmm. right? Because that's the liquid portion. Bean of water, beany water. Yeah, that's how I like to say. Yeah, beany water. Beany water. Yeah, and that water is obviously hydrating because it's water. Right. The caffeine component actually acts as a diuretic, so it causes you to pee. Mm -hmm. But the amount of pee that you create is usually a net neutral with mm -hmm. the water that you've taken in. So you take in water, it hydrates you, but then you pee it out. So it's a net equal. So I'm not very hydrated in the morning like I think I am. Well, you are because you're doing the 24 ounces oh, after. But okay. if you just drink a coffee, it's not dehydrating or hydrating. I see. Because it cancels each other out. Oh. Oh, because of the water in the coffee. Mm -hmm. Great. But then if you're doing espresso shots, less water. Less water, more oat milk. And more dehydrating because there's less liquid. Right. Oat milk must be hydrating because that's oat water. Yeah. Yeah. But how much are, you're not putting in eight ounces of oat milk in your espresso? I might. Wait, then I you're could drinking be. oat milk with a side of espresso. I could be. Well, you don't know. I don't. Yeah, I assumed. Have you seen it? I haven't. Yeah, 
Have you seen the sign in JFK? <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't. No. We need to go together. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can Just bring a to coffee the to the sign. Right. To the guy that controls the sign. Yes. And I don't know why I assume the guy controls it. Maybe because I saw him flipping the switches. You didn't, though. You don't know. Did you no, see it? No, but that's a lie. Did you and see it? No, because I could see that one on your face. <laughs> Is there like an anatomical um, tell for liars as a doctor? I'm sure. I've read a really good book about what everybody is telling you but everybody everybody yeah is telling you right and it was a good book by joe navarro fbi guy <clears throat> and he's like someone's buttons up their suit out of nowhere while they're sitting they're getting uncomfortable right because they're trying to create space yeah of course so there's some cool things in there. yeah there's there's plenty of things yeah yeah like if someone's like while they're listening to you they're like slightly like covering their mouth it usually means they have something to say, say yeah but they're trying to hold it in yeah Mm -hmm. We haven't done that yet, though. No. We've I kind mean, of let also, everything secrete out. Like... Sorry. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> what was your name again? Uh, Ricky Bob. <laughs> wow. From Talladega Ricky Nights. Right. Yeah. It's you an old have one. seen me. Yeah. That's why I was upset you didn't bring me a coffee. Okay. Because I thought because with that you're movie. Such a, right. Yeah. That, that was kind of your star, star vehicle. People are probably confused listening to this right now. Mm -hmm. And they think we've drank more than coffee. No. But we haven't. We have only drank coffee yeah. and water. I had a box this morning. And you boxed this morning. Mm -hmm. Are you a big boxer? I try to be. Right, because you did a fight. Yes, yeah. two fights. Right, two fights. So I'm a fighter. So do you box? Or like, what's your box vibe? Is it like... Um, I have so like, many Are things. you at like Rumble? I'm trying to think. Or of. are you like, you're like with a trainer? With a trainer. Oh, okay. Like my trainer isn't as cool as your trainer. Probably. Because yours is Megan. But oh my God. That was good. Thank you. Not bad. Not bad. See, doctors can have personality. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. anyway, speaking of Megan Trainer, She's how did great. you guys meet? Um, we haven't yet. Uh, but okay, that's, she, <laughs> that's now I feel like you're lying. I could be because I watched you in a tub no, with her. We were in a tub. What were we, what were we doing? I can't tell you. We were singing. Oh, come on! Sorry. You, come on. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so we met because she asked me to do... So she was like the first famous person to follow me back in the day. Really? Like, okay. long time ago. I did not even have that big of an account. But now I know she's just like a follower. She'll she'll follow anyone who brings her oh, the slightest okay. bit of joy, which is great. Love her for that. But she followed me. I sent her a DM after she followed me and she never responded. So I was like, great, that's our... that's And there it is. And that is our scope of me and Megan Trainer. <laughs> uh, she'll just watch from afar. And then I ended up, I was thinking about her one night. So naturally, as we all should do, I posted on my Instagram story that I'm thinking about Megan Trainer. Wow. And then she somehow saw it and reposted it to her story. And then we started reposting it back and forth and back and forth. And then um, she DM'd me her number. Mm -hmm. I was like, we should hang out sometime. And wow. I ended up, and it was right around the time that I was going through a breakup. So then I ended up, she was like, well, we should hang out. Do you want to come on my podcast? All of the things. And if, since I was now a solo act, I went over there alone and did her podcast. And then she was like, do you want to do some TikToks together? And I was like, yeah, I can think of some TikToks. Um, and then we did some of them together. And she was like, wow, you're really good at this. And I was like, <laughs> right. It's all I do. <laughs> I have no, I, there's, I have no other Was hobbies. it offensive or a compliment that she said that? No, it was a compliment. Okay. It was for sure a compliment. Because some people say that you're a great influencer. Like, I don't know. You don't like it. No, I well, can see also, how somebody could see it in a negative way. I guess. But you're also like, you truly do have a different profession. I guess. I, I think doctors are influencers, though. They do influence. Like, don't eat that. Well, first of all, if your doctor says don't eat that, <laughs> that's a mean doctor. Really? Yeah. Wait. They what shouldn't a, tell you what okay, to do. Right. Okay. Don't I would advise you to hold back. <laughs> I would advise you on the risks of eating this. I would advise you on the risks of, of, right. Okay. And I don't then have you can anywhere decide. to go with that. Yeah. Uh, and then you can decide. So it's always, the team. choice is always, okay, team. So teamwork. you ultimately have patient autonomy. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so she said you're a great Yeah, she said Sorry, it was great. I to, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I love the anecdotes. I'm I'm pulling them out of you. They're secreting out of you. I, I so, secrete a lot. Yeah. So <laughs> I just wanted to let that land. Um, I, I So she said, you're really good at this. So I was like, yeah, I, I, mean, I love doing it. And then her team was like, would you want to come back and like, keep doing this stuff together mm -hmm. 
I had just gone through a breakup. I had nothing else going on in my life. I was like, of course, I'll do whatever. And then from there, like we just became friends and we started, we like, we do TikToks together a lot, but also I've gone on vacation with her family. Wow. I'm about to go to Australia with her for two weeks. Wow. Should be so fun. That's so fun. Um, so, and, and also like, it was just so cool to watch her like release made you look and do that whole thing. And while we were to like still like we, I, I felt like we were like a team doing all of the, I mean, obviously she is like running all of this and she's right. She's also just like a genius at writing all this music and she truly does it all herself. Mm-hmm. She's a writer, producer, music engineer, all of the things. Wow. And so I just like slowly became obsessed with her. And thankfully she was obsessed with me as well. Since you're an influencer and you influence so many people. One or two. Did she influence you in any way? Has she influenced me? Probably. Well, yeah, sure. Oh. I guess. Um, how has she, how has Sounds she? Sounds like you're convincing mm-hmm. yourself. How has she influenced me? Um, you know, well, you you're right, In you know, so in the way that <laughs> in the, this isn't a gotcha question. <laughs> no, so <laughs> exactly, and I'm glad you said that. Yeah. So that's how. What? <laughs> I feel like I should have another coffee. No, right so, so um, yeah. So she's, I don't know. She's, I, I'm just very inspired by her work ethic. Mm. I think that's what, one of the first things I ever asked her, because while we were like making TikToks together, her team comes in and she's like, can you approve this? And uh, what are you going to do on this Tuesday? And are, are you okay if we have this person come in at 10 before you do that? And she just like handles it all. And I asked her, I was like, do you ever get stressed when people are asking mm-hmm. you like 5 million things? Yeah. Because if I have like, I get too many texts, I'm like, it's time for bed, I yeah. guess, like off to a nap. Um, and she's Give like, yourself no more credit. I don't believe that for a second. But yeah. yeah, no, I don't. That's it, it was a lie anyway. But uh, she she's very much she just handled and she's like, no, I, I mean, it's it's all stuff that none of this is really like world shattering mm-hmm. stuff like I, you know, I can handle it all. Um, and if doing something at one time is going to make someone happy or if like I'm able to like, you know, connect with people more by doing this thing then I want to do it. And so I feel like she's really helped me with being more open to opportunities and like saying yes to things, but also she's, she is, she'll stand her ground when she wants to say no to, Mm -hmm. I think she's just been in this industry for so long. Like she kind of had her break when she was like 18, 19 Mm -hmm. and she's 29 now. So she's like been 10 years of being in the industry. And so she knows how to handle advocate for herself and go about things so well that um, it's something that I like aspire to. Yeah. I mean, anyone that has, navigated this world successfully i'm in awe of because yes none of this is natural right you've been around for a while like did you just very politely call me old no <laughs> <laughs> that was the <laughs> nicest old you've been call. around for a while i had a uh, barbara corker from shark tank sit in that seat I and heard. tell me she's tell me that she thinks i'm 47 years old no yeah 48 you think no <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. If you were, you would have an amazing skincare routine, okay. which I bet you do no. as a doctor. No. I moisturize. Okay. Sunscreen? Sometimes. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, do, do you call that a skincare routine, though? I think that is. That's, that's skincare. It is. You are caring for your skin. That, okay, fair. Mm-hmm. I just, when I think skincare, I think of serums and you stuff. You think serum, you think moisturizer, eye cream, under all eye, yeah, exactly. Right, right. And you don't do those, those things. I just. You soap and you moisturize. And then you sometimes sunscreen. soap. I'm a big water person. <laughs> okay. And, no, as, no, no. and as a I'll doc- give, I'll give you okay. an example as right. a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say you were moving your arm on that microphone and you, you scratched yourself and you had a minor scratch. What do you think medically is the optimal way to clean that scratch? Like what would you put on it? If it were a minor scratch? Yeah, like you could see blood coming out and it's like, but it's not <laughs> bleeding out. Yeah, if it were, you know, spurting a little bit. Um, I, what would I do? I'd put a, I would like, well, I guess would you with my it? mom, yeah, I would disinfect yeah. it. With what? Um, <laughs> this isn't like, a trick question. Just answer. I don't know. You said that so be aggressively. Be yeah. Like a, a Neosporin or something like okay. that. Right. Would you wash it beforehand? Um, I would probably dab it with off. What? <laughs> I, I get what you're trying to prove. No, here. there's nothing to prove. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> You here's your options with Alcohol, water. I would wash. I would, so there water and soap. Yes, yeah, some I would water. It, wash it off with some water. So you wouldn't right? do alcohol peroxide. 
done this. No, and I, I'm sure that I should have no. done that. No. Okay. You did it right. Okay. You won. Right. I did. I watered. I watered it. Yeah. And then I put a Band-Aid on it. That's it. All the other stuff is largely unnecessary. Disinfecting it. Yeah. Wow. Just Why? water. Why? Because your body will fix it. Heard. But what if it doesn't? What if it gets infected? Okay. Things, when your skin is open, what? it can get infected. Right. But putting alcohol and peroxide immediately after a cut does not help it get clean. Okay. Because it actually hurts the skin, creates more problems. Okay. You don't need to do it. So, so walk me through what a shower looks like for you. Walk you through what a shower looks like? <laughs> yes. Like, <laughs> not what it visually looks like. We can all look. So <laughs> you get in, turn on the water. I usually turn on the water warm. before I get in. Right. I want it to right, warm right. up. Okay. We like a warm shower. Yes. So you get in and the water's going. Yes. And then do you just kind of stand there and then get out? <laughs> do you sit cross-legged? <laughs> like, what are you doing in your you shower? Like, are you Chris, like, teach are me you something. like washing? Like, I'm like, okay, don't. No, are you asking if I use a loofah? Well, it sounds like you don't, you don't use soap. No, no, no. I sat on my face. Oh. Groin, armpits. Uh, I'm soaping. Cool. Chest. I didn't know that. Yeah. If, because I, you were if there's dirt, if I'm soiled. Boxers get soiled. Soap. So then you're using soap. Absolutely. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I was say I don't buy soap. That you were getting in the shower. I'm trying to get a Dove and sponsorship <laughs> and you're hurting me right now. No, no, no. He uses soap. Heard it here. Uh, <laughs> probably third, fourth or fifth time. Um, okay. And then your face. And then my face, I just let it Do you live. let it go under the water? Yeah, of course. Water's good. What about, so you put sunscreen on it. I do. And you don't like cleanse that off ever? Well, it cleanses off with the water in the shower. Right. Okay. Do you touch your face while it's under the water? Yes. Okay. Depends on how rough the day has been. Ah, uh, like, you know. Oh, yeah. Or like. And I also keep my showers really short. And there's also this huge movement of take ice cold showers. 30 seconds. Because it's going to make it so powerful. Okay. Not 30 seconds. Oh. But like five minutes less. Oh. Yeah. Okay. No singing? I've never sang. I have, if I'm going to do a speech. No. If I'm going to do a speech, I say the speech out loud. Oh, okay. So before my TED talk, right. I was saying it in yeah. the shower. Well, that's what most of us do before speeches because a lot of us are like do, giving speeches all the time. Uh, oh, but you got don't me sing. excited. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Misleading. That's not, it's, it's just, you know, it wasn't the most relatable thing you've said. Oh. Um, so, I, <laughs> but you don't, like, have you ever sang in life? I was in chorus up until fifth grade. Uh, oh. So in the 60s-ish? <laughs> yes. Okay, great. Um, so, okay, great. But you don't sing anymore. No. Why not? I'm not good at it. Prove it. Prove that I'm not good at it? Yeah. They kicked me out of chorus in fifth grade. Oh, no, no, no. I That's it. not how I want you to prove it. What do you mean? That's how I prove it. Everyone in the room knows how I want you to prove no it. No right one now. knows. <laughs> and there's no we one here. All. It's just me and you. <laughs> and if you see other people, there's, a, there's a great doctor I can recommend. <laughs> okay. There's a huge audience in the room. Um, okay, fine. So you're not going to sing for us right now. I want to not say what you're yeah. going to say. Because if I did, then people would unsubscribe. And I'm not trying no. to have that happen. Why? He doesn't sing, but he does rap. Yeah. All right. So. So one of the voices okay, I went in my on tour this year, me, uh, uh, last year. Okay, and I performed a ninety-minute rap variety show, <laughs> and one of the parts was I rap about vaccines. Okay, three. I don't two. remember the lyrics. Well, yeah, you do, my dear anti-vax community. Let's have a little unity. Start with a conversation about immunity. Wait, what's? That? You need to give me the meter. No, I don't know how to do this. Come on. <laughs> No. Come on, no. come on, no. Mike. I can't. I just started. They won't doing... come to see the show if I give them the rap okay, now. So you you already gave me like That's three it. lines. I give you a taste, but not the whole pie. Okay, so we're I... not gonna <laughs> heard. So we're not gonna go through the whole thing. But can we at least do it with a beat? No, I'm sorry. That okay. was it. Wow. Can you fit this in your mouth, Megan Trainer? <laughs> <laughs> what did you? What did you? Can just... you fit this in your mouth? Because I probably can. Can, can you show us? Yeah, if you'll rap. <laughs> to my beat for just no. the lines you already no. said no come on man that's it uh, come on. <laughs> how is this enticing to me 
right. There's, it's not really a win-win. You just get to... And then I have to replace the microphone okay, before fine, the next right. guest. Okay. It's not insured. It's not? No, sad. Sorry, my dog is hairy. That's okay. I can tell. Um, There was something Megan I was Megan Trainer. You were saying Megan Trainer. Yeah, I was going to say Megan Trainer. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wanted to ask you, this is a, a passing thought I had earlier in the conversation that I think is worthwhile. So to you weren't up. listening to me. Not, not whatsoever. Okay. But if you had to pick a person who is no longer living to deliver coffee to, who would you bring it to? Wow. Wow. No one's asked me that before. Yay. I feel so seen. Yay. Um, maybe like Marilyn. Marilyn Ooh. Monroe. Oh. Who? <laughs> Get out of your own apartment. That's What ridiculous. about Marilyn Adams? Who's that? Who? <laughs> Don't fucking. We're well, talking about the most iconic Marilyn who has ever lived. There's a lot of iconic ones. Yeah, but there's one that's more iconic than all yeah. of them. And they would all probably agree. I would probably agree too. Maybe except for Marilyn Manson. He might, oh, yeah. might think he's the most. But Marilyn Monroe, I would deliver to her. And I wouldn't film it though. I like her. You wouldn't? Mm -mm. Sorry, I you would saying... want that to be a very oh. like. Sorry, I got excited. Um, I would want that to be a very like. I would want to. I, I say I would want to deliver coffee to her just because I would actually really want to like sit down. Pause. Does that mean you didn't actually want to sit down with all of the other people no, you delivered? No, absolutely that's what it sounds like. not. Ab I think absolutely not. Chastain will be upset hearing that. No, no, no. And you know what the fun thing about Chastain was, was we did sit down and have a full conversation oh, okay. before that. Well, tell and us about actually, that conversation. And that's actually most of the, the only person I really haven't been able to actually spend time with mm -hmm. was Austin and Kamala Harris okay. because they're busy. They're okay. busy people. Austin, I got like five seconds with all the, our entire time you saw was on camera. Wow. Kamala. We did talk for a second afterwards, but about public then, policy. No, she actually ref. She was telling me how much she liked my videos, which I was really surprised about because I was like, how, what are you, why are you watching these? <laughs> I mean, I, I was so Staff probably, but thank you. hundred percent. Well, yeah, but don't break the illusion. What do you mean? Let me think we about her like sitting and just watching. Them. No, because then she's not preventing war. Right. And that's her only job. Because she's not allowed to job. be a human. No. Do you want your doctor in the operating room watching TikToks? At some point during his day, <laughs> I would love for him to decompress. And he deserves that. No, she can watch TikTok. Yeah, and I hope well, she no, does. And her I hope team she definitely shut her down. Actually, I hope she doesn't because I've heard TikTok spies on people, and I don't want TikTok spying on the vice president of the United States. Yeah. So See, I take it back. I TikTok want TikTok inspire me all they want. Why? Uh, you know, I I've already told the internet so much. Really? What is there to find? What's the uh, thing that you've told the internet that you'd want to take back the most? I don't want to take it back, but my publicist did text me and said. Mm. So when you told the story about having chlamydia three times, I I just want to let you know that, you know, people are listening, uh, right? And there's, good. A, and there's an audience for this that, you know, it, it, this is, this is not just to a few people. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's like, you know, the, some of the things you say have impact. So just be aware. He, he was not very like, you take it down, but he was like, be aware that these, that, that is now a headline, on a different news article. Chris Olsen has had chlamydia three times. Here's why. Say it again. Chris Olsen has had <laughs> chlamydia three times. Here's why. And do you know why saying it is incredibly positive in my eyes? Because, no, because, and the stigma. That's what I think. Yeah. And that's actually what I said when I first said it in the video, I say, so I've had chlamydia three times and the stigma because end it. Yeah. Also be safe. Be safe. Yeah. 100%. The, the goal of saying it is not to say, go get an infection. Go get chlamydia. No. Take that back. Oh. That don't one get back. chlamydia. Yes. Yes. That's the message we want to Heard. Say. And the message is, if you do get an infection, is not to feel shame about it. No. Because shame equals not getting medical care, hurting yourself mentally, Physically at times, and we don't want that. And perhaps transmitting it to others. If you exactly. also, if you're not getting tested and you don't know you have it, exactly. Um, and that's one of the biggest barriers to getting people tested because they're worried that they may have it. Right. Which but is, but then like, that's, that's the worst. That's why we should problem. go. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's that was actually one of the thing about getting on. I think that was one of the benefits for me about getting on prep is to stay on it. You have to be tested every three months, mm -hmm. which I feel like is a pretty good. That's like a, a good time frame anyway. Mm -hmm. 
for me as a for human. For people that are listening, um, can you share what prep is and what was your decision making? In you may you have to like expand on the things, but from sure. my understanding, and I can too, if you don't want to mm -hmm. do it, it is a preventative for HIV that can also be used. Um, if you do contract it, I think it can. Okay. Let uh, me do it. Right. Okay. But I do know, okay. I'll, I'll actually just share my own experience. Good. So Wait, the reason let me explain what PrEP is so they know what you're saying. Yes. Okay. So PrEP is pre-exposure prophylaxis where before you're exposed to something, you mm -hmm. can get protection. Mm-hmm. So with this, we combine two medicines into one pill. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can get it in a shot. And this medicine decreases if you're exposed to the HIV virus, 99% mm -hmm. likelihood less of contracting it. 99, yourself. huge. So very big. Yes. And so I got on it um, because, it, well, people like uh, HIV can be prevalent in the gay community it sure. was i mean obviously we had the aids crisis in the 80s it still is a thing um mm -hmm. but with prep i think it's become um much more manageable for i guess the people who have it or but also preventative so anyway i took it as a way of like okay i'm a sexually active gay mm -hmm. man now mm -hmm. i want to be preventative and make sure i'm protecting myself sure. from all the ways mm -hmm. so i started taking it like it, do you do you Years believe ago. that it's all the way? Are you still protecting yourself in other ways? Because we still say, yeah, you if you're using right. prep, you should still use a condom. Totally. I will say the adherence to my recommendation is probably low, even though that's not what's recommended. Right. But my job is to inform of risks and patients to make decisions for 100%, themselves. Hundred percent. As we said in the beginning, we, we talked about that before. Yep. Great. So that's important. Yeah. Um, and then also, what happens is. And we need to counsel people on this, that if you do take PrEP, it doesn't protect you from all oh, sexually transmitted infections. Exactly. And that's why. And that's why I found out I've had, I've had chlamydia three times. Oh, okay, got it. But I've, it's actually been very spread out and I, I haven't gotten it recently. Safety. Um, but yeah. I the first time I ever got it, I was like 15. And it was one of the first times I had ever been tested. Mm -hmm. And it was like, at that point when you're 15 and you're young and you hear you have chlamydia, you're mm -hmm. like, that's like, of course. oh my God, the world is ending. So I'm dying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember because I was a minor, they like called my parents or something mm. like that. Interesting. It also could have been because my, I'm a junior and my dad's name is the same name as I. So possibly I think when he answered the phone, they were like, we're looking for Chris Olson. And he was like, hi. Um, <laughs> And that was interesting news for him. Yeah, so I I got it, and then I had to have my antibiotics like uh, shipped to the boarding school that I was at at the Ooh, time. Okay, and then I took them, and then after you take your antibiotics for two weeks, you're you're free. You did two weeks of that? Maybe it wasn't two weeks. Okay, how long did I do? I mean, it depends when. How old were you? 15? I was fifteen the first time. Depends. Okay. I'll leave it at depends because it depends if they give you azithromycin or doxycycline and there's different timetables. Yeah, so. I don't know. It could have been so, all of them. I doubt it was all. Right. No. Probably um, not. But the reality of STIs is they carry so much stigma and they get classified into these embarrassing diseases that mm -hmm. they shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. And I actually have a video that I'm trying to write and film called Embarrassing Diseases That Shouldn't Be. Yeah. And on that list is like herpes and things that people right. get really afraid of. Right. Where... I'm like, this will probably have no impact on your life outside of an outbreak every now and then. And even that can be decreased significantly with the medication. Yeah. Isn't there a medication that- For suppressive that, therapy. Because yeah. also when you're not when you're not having an outbreak, then you can't, then you don't transmit it. Or you have Almost. a less likelihood of no, transmitting. No. If you truly have no outbreak and no outbreak incoming, yes, you can't transmit it. Got but it. if the outbreak is imminent- incoming. Like if it's about to happen. Yes. Wow. There's a- possibility there okay we found so that's why we don't want to say okay, if there's no lesions you're good mm -hmm. it's like mm, most of the time you're good yes but i do think the stigma should be ended and there was a little bit of discourse in that comment section because a lot of people because some me. people were like oh you're you're making it you're like Trivial promoting reason. being unsafe during mm. that and i was like no 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 like i i'm promoting testing i think that's all i was like and people as i'm sure you know as a doctor like people are going to do what they want at the end of the day. Like you can't control another person. And so, but all you can do is encourage them. Like, okay, if you're not going to like always be safe when you're doing sexual activity or something like that, just go get, just at you're least. You're talking about risk reduction. Yes. Because as you were talking about the uh, AIDS epidemic of the eighties, 
there was some school of thought that said you should just not have sex. And that's the messaging right. doctors are allowed to say, because that's the correct messaging. That's how we fight back against this. Right. And we saw that fail terribly. Right. And we realized, okay, there's got to be like risk reduction mitigation methods where we don't just say flat out it's zero or a hundred. There's exactly. shades of gray. Yeah. 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 So that's what I was trying to, I mean, I'll also, when I was making the video, I, there wasn't even that much analyzation behind it. Like, that's how I'm going to start the video. I was like, that's a funny way to start the video. So I'm going to do it. Uh, and then there it goes okay. from there. What did you take uh, from your three experiences of having chlamydia? Did you uh, I, learn more about the healthcare system, how it worked? Did you have any troubles getting treatment? No, I guess I did. I, I, by the first time you kind of, by the time you're in the doctor's office and they're like, oh, we're just prescribing these antibiotics. Like the high stakes nature of it all kind of finally goes down because you're like, oh, okay, here. I'm going to be okay. They, you, you, if you correct me if I'm wrong again, I think if you're living, if you're not living with it for a very long time, there really aren't many serious there can't, there's... Oh. See, this is how hard medicine is. Yeah. You see this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, my God, the way you have to speak. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'm not even going to finish that sentence because it could be wrong. But I figure... I you say it on the... The way you do it, by the way, is you say it on the other spectrum. Mm -hmm. That if you're living with undiagnosed STIs, mm -hmm. that can breed problems. Right. Like right. if you have longstanding untreated uh, gonorrhea, yes. that can lead to arthritis. Yes. I remember yes. looking it up because once I found once I found out I had it, I was like, "What are what's going to happen to me?" And infection can spread. So yes, that's a problem. Yes, so different and organs. So I th all yeah. three times I've had it, I've been from what Quickly I treated. know yeah. asymptomatic as well. Like oh, okay. I, I've never I've never actually felt that I've had it mm -hmm. in whatever way. Which is that why you could... screening and testing is so important. Yes, exactly. And so that's why when I had, I'm like, okay, great, and and then. You go and they prescribe you the antibiotics and you're like, so by the second and third time, I think mm -hmm. it was, I was more just like, okay, I got this. Okay. You know? What's your relationship like with healthcare in general? Like, do you have a good relationship with your doctor? Um, yeah, I, well, here's the thing. Hmm. I haven't found, I haven't like started with, since I've, since I've like left college in Boston I haven't started with a, like a new doc. Like when, you don't have a primary. I don't have a primary. Oh, so how do you get healthcare now? Um, like when I needed to get re-prescribed prep, I like I did it. I did um telehealth. Mm. Yeah. What about in outside of that? Outside of that, I still go to my same dentist back in the DC area. That's home. Okay, but that's, that's not, different. Yeah. Healthcare. Yeah. Dentist is like doctor something, right? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> it's just n n not the world I live in. So mm -hmm. I was just curious. Okay. Yeah, like, uh, if like if, you, if I you get had sick. a rash on your arm, oh, or I don't. I get I a haven't. bump on your skin. Your knee hurt. Who do you go see? I don't. I don't really. And that's and that was actually something that my last like when I was in a relationship last, mm -hmm. he was like, "If you're still because I'm 25, so I'm still on my dad's insurance for another year." He's like, "Yeah, I know." And then I will we'll have to switch it up. He's like. But I was with him from ages 22 to 24. Mm -hmm. So I was very, very much on it the whole time. And he was like, if I were, if I like readily had insurance that I wasn't paying for, like every time something happened to me, I would go get a checkup at a doctor. For some reason, I, one, thankfully, like knock on wood, I, not, I, I'm not feeling too bad most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, That's great. Yeah. But two, I guess like if I get, if I'm starting to feel, I'll go to an urgent care thing, something like that. You hate it. You're so mad. I'm You're sad. You're so mad at me. I'm okay. sad. Okay. These are my disappointment. Right. Eyes. Right. It's and and listen. And it's not because and it's not because I it's not because I don't like you. Mm. And it's this isn't personal. Um. And it's not because I. <laughs> I'm not offended by this. <laughs> right. Right. I'm no, upset no. because you could be getting better care. Hundred percent. Yeah. I agree with you. Why? And Why do you agree with me? Because, because you're right. Why? Because I could be. Why? Because like I have, I'm on my dad's insurance and there's probably so many lovely doctors around Los Angeles or New York City. I'm sitting in front of one right now. But what, what benefit would you get by seeing oh. them? Like you're saying it's better, but I'm curious. <laughs> um, do you believe that? Or are you just saying that because I'm here? Partly because you're here. Yeah. But I guess, 
I do. Th I think there's a lot of worth in having a relationship with someone as a doctor mm. that like you can feel like you trust them more. So if yeah. there are things you want to say, you For know sure. me. And so I can trust you more if I'm going to an urgent care person and maybe it's something like an STD or it's yeah. something that's feels more vulnerable to talk about. Mm -hmm. I think I and probably other people would feel a little more True. resistant the to saying those things. definitely better with continuity. Yeah, right? like my doctor who was my, uh, oh, oh, what's it called when you're a child doctor? Pediatrician. Yeah, my pediatrician who was with me until I was like 18. Mm -hmm. By the time, he was the first one to give me all the STD testing and everything. And like by the time I'm um, like, I was 18 and still mm -hmm. going to him, like I feel like I couldn't, you know, he know sure. he's known me my entire life. Mm -hmm. I can really talk to him. It's kind of like my my the worth I find in a therapist as well. Yep. It's tough when you first start going to one because you have to kind of go through your life story and get comfortable with them. But then when you have them for a while, you can go. But my I guess my thought with it is similar to my the my friend's thought with having a therapist okay. because when I convince someone to go connect with a the therapist, they're like, it's just like I just don't know where to start. Like I'm I. And then starting and going and having to tell your whole life story, all of the things. And I'm like, yeah, but you have to start. And then a few months from now or even weeks, you'll feel comfortable and like you're going. Yep. And I'm just in that spot with the doctor of being like, you can yeah, but I, I, I have this. I have the, the urgent care. And so where am I supposed to just begin? Got it. I, the, I don't... I completely agree with you that the yeah. process sucks and it's not easy to find a good primary and you're moving around a lot. So you're busy. Like I am. these are all very reasonable places for you to be. Uh, the reason why I really push for people, especially young folks to get a primary is obviously the reason that you said to have a better line of communication with someone that follows them throughout their life, especially me. I'm a family medicine doctor, so I treat kids and adults. Mm. So like I've had patients that I've been seeing since they were 15 and now they're 21 and I'm still seeing them. That's, that's a beautiful thing yeah, to watch someone right, go through all right. stages and know who they are and the impact that I had on them as a doctor when they were 15, I'm seeing the benefits today, which is right. very rewarding. Right. But then there's things that we can do in healthcare that can prevent problems. Mm -hmm. So like urgent care can be great to fill a need and the void of in like moment. not needing to go to the ER because you don't need emergent surgery or you're like bleeding out or something but you have an acute problem mm -hmm. and your primary might be super busy that day, you can get into an urgent care. Right, right. Could be totally appropriate. Yeah. But then for more lifestyle-focused things where you can improve the likelihood of this issue returning, uh, get counseling on the issue uh, of what risks you face by continuing to do certain right, things, right. getting vaccines, cancer screenings, all those things don't really happen in urgent care centers. No, totally. So that's why the primary is so good. There's some things that we can truly prevent and mitigate risk on, and then some things we can just have an open conversation. Yeah. No, I I, I believe, and everything I think you're saying is correct. Okay. Um, so, Thank you. Right. And so I'm going to, and yeah. So you'd consider it. I would. That's my goal, to get you into the, from the pre-contemplation to the contemplation. Phase. I also do, like, I do hope to, um, actually, I do want a primary care doctor. Like, that's the thing, I think, too, that's, um, with these urgent care places, you're always like, okay, this is temporary, temporary, temporary. But sometimes temporary can last so long that it becomes permanent. Of course, especially how convenient it is. Right, right. But healthcare, like, valuable, long-term life healthcare can't be convenient no. like that. And I think it's also, to your point, moving around all the time and the past few years have been crazy with the pandemic and everything. So I was like locked down in one place and then I moved to another and now totally. I'm back and forth. So, but now that I feel like I have more roots. There's no need to even excuse the actions. It's just about what to do moving forward. Right. Yeah. yeah. And in this case, like I would love for you to find someone and find someone modern who that when you are moving around, you can have a telehealth visit with your primary. Yes. Like that'd be awesome. Yes. That does feel great. So I would be excited for you to do that. And I'm also glad that you brought up your therapist and you've talked openly about your therapy. You've even shown some I sure interactions I sure have. with your therapist on TikTok. Yes. How did you decide to do that? Because that's like everyone's biggest fear probably. Well, and that's, and I guess that was part of how I was able to share it because I, it's, I, I'm so not scared of therapy because I've been in it for so long. So mm. it's- How long it's have you been so, in it? I want to say maybe the first session I went to, it must've been like 13. Mm, so over so 10 it's been years. like 12-ish yeah. years now. Um, so I, I've been in therapy for so long that it feels so like 
destigmatized in my mind, but I know it can be a thing for everyone else. Anyway, I had it one therapy session that I was like, this is like, we had so many, we got to, we touched the deep things of the week and all, all of that. But also there were so many like funny moments in here. Mm-hmm. Like maybe next week I'm just going to record it back. Also, cause I think there's worth in like watching back some of the things that you sure. say and stuff like that. And just being, were able you to, doing like, that before you were shooting the TikToks? No, I would write about them oh, afterwards, okay. but not like do a full like journal. video of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because um, she kind of had that idea like a while back. But so then I started doing the recording of them. And then I remember the first time I recorded it and just being like, yeah, there's like good stuff here. And also, I'm if you watch them, like I'm never really sharing the moments that are really personal to me, that are the mm-hmm. ones that are like, um, like if something's very vulnerable and going on in my life, I'm not just going to be like, okay, well, that's on the internet, but I'm also, I'm still sharing parts where, you know, I can sometimes get emotional, but also the funny parts and the parts that are more lighthearted because those all exist in therapy. Yeah. Like the entire spectrum, I think it's, it's important to find a therapist, not that you're friends with, like, I think if it, there, it can be, there's a, a line of like, you know, the truly doctor patient, mm-hmm. but also that you still feel very comfortable with that. You can have a little bit of a banter with because then as you get to the deep parts, you don't feel like there's that barrier up already. Mm-hmm. And so I started sharing those. And I remember like, for the most part, I think a lot of people watch those and it's a nice little laugh for their day and that's yeah. it. But I think there are a lot of people who, um, it, kind of like took that stigma away from therapy or or it made them feel like, Oh, this is how therapy Mm -hmm. therapy can be. It can be more of something that's, it's not as scary of a thing. And I remember like someone like then being out in public, people have come up to me and been like, I got back into therapy because of those, or I started therapy because of those videos. And so then I always kind of try to remember that. And with a lot of my content is that like these, whatever you're mentioning, like, like the the chlamydia thing. Mm-hmm. Even if for the most part, most people are just having a little laugh at your video, mm-hmm. there are a few people out there who it can be a much deeper thing for them. And so the therapy videos, they're, they continue to be funny and I continue to like hope to make people laugh from them. But I also hope that people can continue getting into it because it, it isn't, if it like, I, it isn't as scary as I think it is. The big battle of it is beginning. Yeah. And feeling like, oh, I have to, I have to, it takes a while to get there, to get to that spot that like Chris is in with his therapist. Mm-hmm. But like, I'm never going to get there if I don't start. True. Not to sound like a therapist, but how does it make Do you it. feel when people come up to you and tell you that you've changed their lives in that way? Oh, it's like, well, it's kind of unfathomable in mm-hmm. a way because you, you're, it's that parasocial relationship of someone who I don't know, who has a full relationship with me coming up to me and being like, I, my life has changed because of you. Like mm-hmm. yesterday I was in a Starbucks. Wow. I was meeting someone I'm in a Starbucks. Yeah, no, but right. I was in a Starbucks. It was right before Jessica Justine because she wanted Starbucks. And so we had to get a Starbucks. But did I she was, turn down your brand? No, she took it. Oh, oh, you didn't watch the video. No, right. Um, no, but she has a Starbucks and then also takes that yeah, coffee. Okay. Uh, but yesterday, I was in a Starbucks, uh, meeting up with her team before we went, and a girl turns around and starts crying because she saw me, and she's like, "I've just blah, 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 you changed my life, all of these things." And it is so beautiful, and I hold space. Um, I'm never. I don't find myself becoming like. I find myself in that now I need to take care. I'm like, it's okay. Like I, we got that. Like I'm like, I, I try to ask about their day. I'm like, I'm trying to normalize the situation, but it's also, I think I, I'm able to process it more after the fact. And I'm more like that's it, it brings me so much joy to know that someone is impacted in such a deep way. Um, and that, yeah, they, they've been able to like in, in a moment of their own darkness, they've been able to, find some light through anything that I've been doing because I feel like I find so much, like I find so much joy out of the things that I'm doing as well. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it's like, we're both giving it to each other in a way. Does that impact your thought process for your future content? Like, yes and no. I think it always, I, I, I'm never, it's not too often that I really go into a video being like, this is the impact I want Mm -hmm. to, for it to hit. I think I find that after the fact, Mm. Um, which I think is a good thing. I think if I were going in with too much intention of changing people, um, then it might be almost like artificial. Yeah. It'll be artificial. It's like too self-aware in a way. 
And I go in always just with the more simpler thought of like to bring joy. And to be yourself. To bring joy, to be myself. And, and then just, if something good comes out of it, you celebrate it. Right, right. And so then when I'm surprised by the further impact that it has, mm -hmm. then um, it makes me, th then, I, then I know like, okay, I should just keep doing what I'm doing yeah. rather than, okay, now I need to think more about this. Mm -hmm. Because if it's already happening through my relatively lighter thought process of it, then like if I were to change that, then then it becomes such more artificial. When you say unfathomable, I also think about how unnatural it is to have someone watching over your life and right. then you not know anything about their life, but still want to be nice and cordial, but how difficult it is to genuinely be in that position. Right. And you try to get to know them in that, in that, those few well, seconds. Well, it's like the but, art of dating. Like if you see yes. someone across the room that you are attracted to, there's nothing honest you can go to say to them right. outside that you find them attractive. Right. Right. Cause that's, which is, the, then the problem with dating apps yeah. because all of them are just based off of looks. Yes. Not that it's something that I'm like uh, anti-dating apps. I am, no, no, I am on one, sure. but um, they, uh, they can, yeah, it's based off of looks and as, as much, as much of life is, you know, like we, we, that's the first thing we perceive people with and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. But um, yeah, I'm not, I don't try to, I don't try to like uh, build too much off of the the things that I'm doing. It just kind of tries to just come from here. Um, the thing I wanted to emphasize that you talked about was in getting to know your therapist and not crossing a line. I think that point is so important because the number one thing that decides success mm -hmm. between a patient and their therapist is not their degree. It's not whether right. they're a counselor, social worker, psychologist, psychiatrist, family medicine doctor. It's the connection that they have. And you can't really qualify or quantify what that means on a paper. Yeah. It's just go for your first session and think about it like a first date. Right, right. And see if this is a good fit, whatever that means for you. Yes. And if for whatever reason you don't feel it's a good fit, go to see someone else. And it's totally fine. I'm, there, That's expected I, by I, yeah, yeah. Most therapists have probably had like, have probably had more first sessions that then don't continue than like, yeah, because they can only have so many people anyway mm -hmm. on their roster. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's like you're, you are, you have the, you have the power in that moment. I think that's what people are, um, like scared of too. Of is they're just like, I just feel like I don't know, like, what am I going to talk about? All of it. It's like whatever you want to bring to the table for this first session. Yeah. You're like, in charge. Yeah. Like, it's not you're going to see someone who's going to tell you what to do. Right. And then I have the flip side. Some patients be like, what am I going to do? Just talk about my feelings? Mm -hmm. Well, go and see if that's what ends up happening. Maybe you right. won't at all. Right. And it'll be all practical stuff. Uh, yeah. A, a lot of the time with my sessions, like the first few minutes of the session anyway, are just like talking about my day yeah. or like telling a funny story that I was like. Oh, and you've been doing this therapy consistently for the 12 years, right? There have been like... Well, mostly consistent. Yeah, 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 yeah. The reason I say that is not everyone who goes to therapy or needs therapy will need it for 12 years. No, You could yeah. be going through a rough patch and having an adjustment situation right. where you need support right now and right. to think through something. And that's totally okay. In fact, my therapist almost like kicked me out of therapy oh. after we've done an, enough time and we've gotten through the issue that I was working on and we kind of were reaching a roadblock where we were like... I don't have anything. Okay, else we to don't talk have about. anything right now. So it's okay, let's come back when you have something. Wow. Yeah. And that's a very therapists who do that need to be applauded. Right. Because right. they're they're doing it for the right reasons, especially right. if you're paying them yeah. out of pocket. Right. Cause then they're like, Yeah, I'm not gonna get paid, but you know, where you you have done the work here. Yes. Yeah, no, I've and I've had different therapists throughout the years, but I've had this most recent one that I've had for like five, uh, well, five years with like a year off in there. So I guess four four mm -hmm. total, but we've okay. been working together for a long time. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot of worth in like just connecting with one, but also just like you said, it do, it's not this thing that has to be like, and now I'm going to do therapy forever. No, But if it feels, Good. but if that yeah, also feels works. like yeah. something that you might need or that's helpful, then do it forever. The goal of doctors is really to number one, support, right. validate all of those things, but also to give tools 
so that you can make decisions on your own and not need a doctor all the time. Right. Like when patients come in with a musculoskeletal injury, their knee hurts, their mm -hmm. back hurts. My goal isn't just to like diagnose real quick, give a treatment, run out the door. Right. It's also to give some education as to how I'm thinking about this, yeah. what I would be concerned about, what are some red flag things. So the next time they're like, oh no, the doctor told me what I should be looking out for. This will probably go away. I'm comfortable waiting. Yeah, right, right. we're cutting down the use of healthcare system, cutting down how many times you need to go spend with a mm -hmm. doctor. And mm -hmm. it's like a, a win, win, win. Yeah. So yeah. Did, did, what, what tools did your therapist teach you? Um, well, at the start, she was very like, it was definitely very intense. And mm. it was very like, we are, we're very emotional. Um, yeah, emotional, but also like, um, she's not a therapist that's just there to like, listen and agree. Mm. Like if I say something or if I'm going through something and I'm not in the right, or if there's like a way I should have dealt with something in a different way, she'll let me know. Interesting. And she, she, did, but less so now, because I think now I hopefully I I'm guess through the right. work that we not, not I'm always more right, but I'm, I'm now doing that work in my head mm. before I've even gotten to the session. I'm like, yeah, I did this and I, I should have reacted in, in this way. But I think I was doing that because I felt this, like I'm now able to kind of sometimes analyze too far. Cause she's like, yeah, Chris, it also just sounds like you were maybe sad that day. And I'm like, Hmm. Yeah, like I have to like I I've just overanalyzed mm -hmm. every every scenario. But early on, she was very like um, she would it, it was almost like prioritize like how are you in the wrong in this situation? Because I think a lot of the time, at least I guess who I was, but I think sometimes humans can be very like we can tend to tend to lean towards like thinking of the ways we're a victim in a situation, which is okay because a lot of the time we're always trying to be right. We're trying to operate with love or in the right way. Mm -hmm. So when most of us are trying to do that, then when something goes wrong, of, of course it's not our instinct to be like, what did I do? Like it's our instinct to, to protect like, ourselves. Hey, I'm, I'm always a good person though. So like it has to be the other people. Um, and so I think she is help has helped me go to the other side of being like, yes, you are usually you're, you are operating at, operating out of good intentions but that doesn't mean that encompasses a hundred percent of your actions and sometimes your good intention for yourself might have a negative effect on someone else mm. um in whatever way that it does and so i think i've i've now tried to i find more of the middle ground with her of being like of of analyzing while my intention may have been good the action may have caused this sure. and then this might have been what happened so she was pretty she was really tough on me really early good. on and now i feel like we're we're evened out and i know and and also we've talked about how sometimes like the toughness maybe wasn't needed she like she has she actually apologized to me for some of the early sessions because she was like i think you know there were parts that you didn't need for the way that we talked about things there while it also was effective we're, you're a human dealing with feelings. Like yeah. you never know when you're going too far to one side of the spectrum until you've gone there. Mm -hmm. And so now we try to like, because I was on one side and she, she like flung me all the way to the other. And so we're like, okay, now let's find Good. the middle ground. I'm also a very black and white person. I'm an extremist in mm -hmm. so many of the things that I do. And so like, I feel like so much of our work is finding gray areas. Good. So you're like thriving in the sea of nuance. Wow. That's beautiful. <laughs> Just like your eyes. Thank you. Blue like the sea. Speaking of uh, <laughs> my eyes, do you ever masturbate? What? You never heard of masturbation? No. <laughs> what is this? What? It's when you force yourself to do something that you don't want to do, but in this reality, you're real choosing term. to do it. Yes. Must. Wait, hold so on. So you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, I have to go to work. Oh, I, I must masturbate. Go to work. I must do this. And then you're just like, Masturbate. You like that transition though? Yeah. Wow. So speaking Is this of, like very 60 wait, uh, minutes. No, no, no. But here, here's here's the thing though. <laughs> if we were really if we were really speaking of the true meaning of masturbate, then that sentence didn't make sense. Why? Speaking of my eyes, do you ever masturbate? Yeah, I agree. It didn't make a lot of yeah, sense. Exactly. Unless <laughs> I know where you were trying to go. I wasn't trying no, to go anywhere. No, no, because you were I was trying to trying hope to I make, heard the word. I'm not a good interviewer. This is only like my 14th podcast, so I'm trying my best here. This is only your 14th? Mm -hmm. You're doing great. Thank you. I don't know if you really mean that. No, no, no. I think you your are. your body I, language changed and you covered up. No, I didn't. Yeah, you kind of went like this. I didn't. My arms, See? my hands were like See? this. You're That's like, not a full cover. I was like, you're doing, yeah, you're doing great. <laughs> Whoa, he's a liar. 
but it's like you're doing great. I also I would have thought you've done more than this. Thank you. Yeah, I mean you're pretty native to patients. content. Yeah, right. So that's like yeah, part of it. You're talking to people all day, yeah. but you're pre- you're pretty native to the content land. You've yes. I, like I said before, but you've I been react to memes and stuff. Time. So, like, when did you start doing this? Five years ago. Five years ago. Like all of this, mm-hmm. really? Huh? I feel like I saw you as a child. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe as a doctor. Oh, probably not. Oh. Where have you lived? New York. All your life. Yes. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, sorry. Anyway. <laughs> Interesting. I don't know where you have seen me otherwise. <laughs> I, well, I had my uh, viral content, moment started in 2015. I guess that was eight years ago, but I didn't have social As media presence. like a hot doctor? Yeah. Wow. So you eight years agreed. ago, you were 17. I was 17. No, And I didn't wasn't. agree oh, to the term. I agreed to the headline. <laughs> right. Wait, what was the headline? People Magazine Sexiest Doctor Alive. Oh my God. That was the first thing that ever happened to you? Well, BuzzFeed wrote it. Check out this hot doctor. And then People Magazine did it. Where and where did BuzzFeed find you? Instagram. Because what were you posting? <laughs> um, I was like into fitness. Like, like I was in the kind of shape you're in now. Oh. So I'm not you, that anymore. You're not? Um, I was for my fight in October. Well, I appreciate you knowing what kind of shape I'm in. That's so sweet of you. I mean, that was my next topic. Oh. But before we go into the topic of your abs, can we talk about your masturbation or potential masturbation? Okay. Explain the term again. Okay. Do you ever find yourself work-wise, relationship I have to do this. I have to. Because oh, I do that a lot. Also called shoulding on yourself. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. I'm, I'm definitely a people pleaser which so that tends to when someone else would want something out of me, mm. then I, I feel like I must. Like I feel like I do it often. Um, but I think I, I think over the years I found better boundaries with, um, what I feel like I have to do and what I feel like, um, I'm I'm allowed to like, take a break from or or care for. Like I mean, the whole journey with content I think has been many in in and out, like ins and outs, because when I started it, I was making, churning out the videos. Mm -hmm. I was making so many of them. And I was like, always just trying to find the new thing. And then along the way, I was like, oh, this, yeah, this doesn't feel sustainable. Like I want to find more of a balance. And over time, the balance has become less, just posting less and less videos because the, when you're doing content for a while, the work you do outside of the videos, one ramps up. So yeah. like, so now I have less capacity to do the videos because a lot of other things are going on, but also like, I want, I want them to continue to be quality. So let me like put more like, do, do, you're pacing want, yourself. It's a marathon, yeah, let me, not a let me pace myself. Like even last year I was still posting every day. Mm-hmm during the week. And now I post when I feel like I want to post good when I feel good about it. Cause there's always something that I'm doing work-wise that sure. day anyway. So it's not like I'm like, Oh, and I, now I never post and I just kind of sit around all day. Like yeah. I'm somehow. And like, if someone people ask like, what do you, what's your day to day? I can't really, I don't really know. Cause it's always different, but somehow I am busy. Like somehow I don't well, seem to have time to like, I, why somehow I don't know because I, you're well, like, you're doing. You're involved in so many ventures. You're an sure, entrepreneur, content sure. creator. Yeah, but I, I guess I musician. also, right, right. I'm able. I also see myself from the outside perspective of just those TikToks, and I'm like, if you're only making that all day, what else are you doing? But I'm like, yeah, I am. Why doing are you that. judging yourself based off someone Self- else's misconception? I know I'm self gaslighting. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, no. Okay, done. <laughs> it's gone. Uh, I actually showed myself this morning. Okay. Because I had to go to box and I didn't want to. And I said, oh, I got to go. I must go. And oh, I'm like, wait. Should yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was your term. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I then reframed it and did the thing that my therapist talked to me about. And I said, okay, wait, am I, do I have to go to boxing? You get. Do I must go or do I want to go to boxing? Oh, oh. Because like, what am I going for boxing for? I'm going because I want to be a better boxer. Yeah, like you signed up to do it. Like you were, there, there was obviously there was a version of you that was, well, I yes, really but also, like, what is the goal to go? Mm-hmm. And the goal is to get better at boxing. Do I want that? Yes, I want that. Mm-hmm. Then I want to go. Great. Then go. So I went. And you did. What time is it? 8.30. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not super great. early. Yeah. But I, I understand. Well, yeah, it's like- Well, by 8.30 this morning, I was I just was eating sore. a bagel. And so I wouldn't have wanted to. Like half a loaf, depending on if you half believe the fact checking of mm-hmm. New York. We're going to fact check that afterwards. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Um, tell me about your abs. Okay. 
How'd you get them? What do you want? <laughs> um, I've actually, I, I let me actually pull up a photo. I've kind of oh. always, I'm going to pull up a photo from a long time ago. Oh. I've kind of always been um, lean in a little bit of a way. Like I've, I think I've almost always had a little bit of an ab, which I think makes it easier for people. So genetic. Yeah. Genetic see that little guy? Oh, he, he's got some abs. Yeah. And boogie board. Yeah. And boogie board to the camera, to the no one in the audience. Um, but I, yeah, I think I've, I've always ha- had them a little bit. I know okay. But maintaining them genetic. into your 20s is hard. Yes. 100%. So oh, no. I work. I, I do work out. Yeah. I do work out. I got really into, like, I, I went to boarding school and I started working out for the first time there because I had a little gym. Mm-hmm. And when I was growing up, I had to play a lot of sports because mm-hmm. my dad was just like, you're going to play sports. So I did. Um, and then so I was I still into fitness. So I started doing it in high school. And then I think I started getting fit. But it wasn't until I was, I want to say, like 20. And I got a job at Equinox working mm-hmm. at the kids club. Mm-hmm. Um taking care of the kids. So I got a free, free membership. And as a broke college student, I was like, this is the best place ever. So I'm going to go to Equinox every day and really work out. And that's when I really started like, um, enjoying fit. And I stopped drinking when I was 19, which obviously really like flushes out all of the, all of the things. And so, um, I want to like, yeah, it was like age 20, 21 that I was like, I started working out like six days a week. Wow hour work or hour half like you know i was kind of was doing it all it it started of just like most of the basic things of like i would have a back uh, back and biceps day a triceps and chest day a shoulders day and so a leg complementary muscles mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. most of the uh, what's what they're called the vanity ones mm-hmm. um yeah so i would do that and then i would i always did a lot of cardio because i've always the cardio has is the part of fitness that feels really good to me. Okay. I don't really like weight. So you lifting. get a runner's high. Yeah. Okay. Not well, actually I like after I've run. That's when the runner's high is supposed oh. to happen. Oh, yeah. see, someone told me that it was when you're during it. And I was like, Absolutely I never feel not. great. I don't, I don't, I'm not loving while I'm running. I'm I mean, like, some Ugh. people love the idea of escaping and being running, but like, that's not no. the runner's okay. high. That we, we're talking about Heard. the endorphin after. Yes. Exercise. That feels great yeah. because then I'm like, wow, I really just did that. So I started working out a lot then um, and so I would, it would be very standard workouts cause I was just working out at Equinox. Mm-hmm. And then when, um, when the pandemic first hit kind of stopped working out and I ended up getting very, like very skinny, that's what ended up happening, which is wild. Cause I, yeah, I, that, that, that's how my body atom- anatomically worked. Mm-hmm. It was like, we're not working out, wise. we're going to get skinny. Um, and so, so then when I got back into it, I started doing a lot of group fitness classes and all mm. of those things, but now I'm kind of back to working out just like on my own. On and as we know, terms. abs are made mostly in the kitchen. So what's your diet like? The, it's the worst part though. I'm not, in what I, way? because I, I don't, I don't eat the best. I'm Why not, is that? I'm not the best well, first of all, let's take the judgment out of it. every morning. Let's take the judgment okay, out of it. Okay, great. Great. What's, but I guess there is judgment usually because a lot of the time when it, someone's like, how do you, what are you eating? Because you have this, I'm like, I, it's this or this. Well, you could just say like, like, I don't watch you. it that well. Yeah. I don't watch it that well. I'm not eating like, I'm not going out of my way and I'm not getting like. You are you know, counting calories, macros, types of foods, anything no, but I specific do, con- diet? I do kind of consistently eat the same thing every day. Okay. So in the morning I have a bacon, egg and cheese bagel. Okay. Lunch is either switches between like a salad or like a a sweet green or like an acai bowl or just like something lighter. Mm -hmm. Cause sometimes, sometimes I also miss lunch, not because I'm trying to intermittent fast or anything. I just like lunch never, I guess cause my, my half a loaf of bread in the morning really still digesting keeps me going through it. Is the bacon, egg and cheese on a bagel? Mm -hmm. That's why. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. And then dinner does switch up, but I feel like it's usually something that has some protein in it, like a chicken or, um, like if I go out like a steak or a burger or something like that, like Mm -hmm. usually something that has a little bit of of protein in it, Mm -hmm. but it's definitely not like, I'm not trying to, I, I don't find the cleanest diet. Um, I'm, I'm not, usually watching it um okay. and i'll, I'll okay. let myself yeah that's like, honest yeah. I, I i'm actually glad you say that isn't that funny that sure i enjoy this i mean i truly i i eat what i enjoy that's great that's what and the I, reason why i'm excited about it is because most people that would have your body 
would then go and say, no, you got to do this. Right. And then my patients would do it and I'd be like, that's not why they have abs. No, because <laughs> every single body is also different. Because yeah. I know like, I know, I know friends with all different types of bodies who are eating very healthy and they're not getting the results they want or eating horribly and they yeah. have the result, the exact result that they want. And yeah. so I've, no, I've never been a person. Cool. And a lot of the time also when people ask me if they're asking for advice or like, what should I do? I'm like, well, cause what are you doing? I'm like, what I'm yeah. doing. I don't know. Like that's great. It could work. It, it might not work for you. Thank you. No, seriously. Props you don't understand how much in the influencer space is the exact opposite of this. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. But I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to, I, because I, I don't have the knowledge of exactly what worked for me. Sure. I just know what I've done. And I, I, we know that That's everyone awesome. is different. Yeah. And so what, uh, do you take any supplements or believe in anything like that? Yes. What do you do? Take some zinc in the morning. Mm. Why zinc? Um, because it's supposed to pr pr like it for your immune system. Okay. Right. I don't, I'm just going to listen. Oh, oh God. I, I hate this. <laughs> I take a probiotic. Okay. Um, cause Megan, takes one that she's influenced me mm. and she was like it it makes her shit every morning and she was like do it okay um and it it works pretty well okay maybe it's also just me um <laughs> you mean maybe you just shit in the morning probably so uh, probably but after the probiotic it was fuel. great um so i take uh zinc a probiotic vitamin d and then um, I just started also taking some magnesium because people said it helps calm you down. When you say people, someone on TikTok. <laughs> nice. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. It was, it was someone on TikTok. What we got out of this interview thus far? Yeah, we've got no a primary lot. care doctor. Oh, Loves urgent care. Take supplements based on TikTok recommendations. I mean, listen. The algorithm has told him. I, it's best. I'm honest with you. And it's so the great. people can be, I'm, and listen, you don't hear me saying, and you should do it too. Like, I'm not trying to influence anyone on something I'm doing. Um, yeah. I'm usually not trying to do that. Like, I'm usually just kind of like talking. Sure. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. So I started taking some magnesium and I will say. I get very nervous before I like go um, on like a talk show or I go speak somewhere or something like that. Oh, so relatable. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to be relatable. I was, I was just, just pointing that out <laughs> because you pointed it out earlier when I said it. So, sure. So I get really, actually stage fright is relatable. So, so is talking in the shower. Okay, great, great. And that's what I was saying. So I, and I had, I took my magnesium that morning and I oddly felt a little calmer before going on that one. Okay. Is it horrible? Should I not be taking that? I'm not your doctor. You said you were going to stay quiet until the end. I just said I was going to stay quiet. So you're not going to tell me anything about the supplements that I take? No. I mean, what would you like to know about the supplements? Like, am I doing anything uh, actively negative by taking those? If one, I'm going to do hypothetical. Okay. If one was to take several supplements, hoping that it would improve certain areas of their health, uh -huh. I foresee a couple of problems arising. Oh. Problem number one, they forego good medical care for the oh. problems that they actually have that could be treatable. Sure. Two, they could be taking supplements that have trace toxins in them. And when I say toxins, I mean I like heavy metals, that. things like that. And that's been found in like protein powders and all these other things. Um, and then also they could be just flushing a lot of money down the toilet with their urine. I do know that one. I do know that multivitamins. Some say, not me, that multivitamins are a scam. So I don't take any of those. Do you take any supplements? Nope. I occasionally will take some protein yeah, right. if you I don't, don't eat soap. enough. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> um, you take protein. Sometimes. But it, like a very clean protein. I mean, the gold standard way. like simple. Oh. Yeah. Like I don't overthink it. Great. Yeah. So it's, and okay. again, I, in my line of work, I could be really pushing some shit. I right. could be selling some supplements. You totally I could. I could be like, yeah. yeah, I know what I'm talking about. The biomechanical right. process. Cause I could tell you how boosting certain vitamin levels can cure certain diseases. Mm -hmm. Dot, 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 dot in mice. Right. Oh, wow. All and Chris of the is not a mouse. Such. I'm not. 
So why would I tell you about that study? Yeah, right. And yet that's how most But you wouldn't have to finish the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Wow. Because a lot of these supplement companies make a lot of bogus claims. And they don't just make bogus claims because the FDA will crack down on really bad claims. Mm -hmm. Like if they say this cures this, the FDA Mm -hmm. will step in. But a lot of them are really sharp and they say like vitamin C is important for immune health. Wow. And that statement is accurate. Sure. Yeah. But does taking your thing that you're selling me improve my thing? Right. Right. No. And also because you're a doctor, you could use just a lot of words that like people might not understand to sell the product because. And they might enjoy my eyes and they might say, let me buy this. And I refuse to do it. Right. So have you ever done an ad, a brand deal? Yeah, of course, but not for supplements. Right, right, right. Or not for things that are bullshit, but like for companies like Audible is a partner because I encourage people to read. Thrive Market is is a partner to get healthy foods delivered to your door. Like things that make sense. Yes. If I like a clothing company, I'm going to do like- Yeah, right, right. Okay, that makes sense. I'm just not going to use my medical license to trick people into taking BS. No, no. And there's a lot of people who are very good at doing that. Right, right. And it's unique in that- People on both ends of the spectrum of finances get the worst advice. Yeah. People who are struggling financially oftentimes don't have money to see a doctor or to pay for their medication, so they get bad care. Mm -hmm. And then people who are very wealthy that are celebrity, they will get doctors recommending them BS to make money, Mm. or they come in demanding something the doctor feels like they're obliged to give them whatever they need if it's not healthy. Mm -hmm. So both sides are getting bad care. It's a unique spectrum. Wow. Yeah. Also, there aren't too many, I guess there aren't that many, um, like, well, maybe I'm just not well-versed in the, in the area of, but like doctor content creators. Oh, there's a lot. There are a lot. Mm -hmm. And I would assume maybe some of them are selling the supplement. Oh, for sure. That for sure. They may not even really believe in, but that is, that is, I guess the whole, well, they believe in it. Oh, they do. Well, they believe that it makes their wallet a little bit thicker. Sure. Sure. So Which I guess is also the whole thing of the like the the plight of the influencer as well of mm-hmm. of it, regardless of what uh, thing you're in, uh, um, or what like niche or what yeah. you know, yeah, what yeah category you get what of I'm content saying. you're making. Yeah. Um, I think some people still can sometimes agree to things that they have no belief in, or that it's just sure. it's purely for the money. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's where finding more of like the genuine the the genuine connection that you have with the things. I feel like that's changed a little bit over Mm -hmm. the last few years where before you could just see any celebrity that was on Big Brother or whatever, um, whatever, Love Island, come on and say, this is the magic. But like now people have kind of become wise to it and are like, you didn't do this. You had surgery. Why are you lying? And like now there's pushback because social media created a layer of transparency around it. Yes, yes. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, because people, yeah, there's people, people talk more and people are connected to so many like understanding the industries that we are all in is so much easier because you have people in those industries talking about the industries online. For sure. Yeah. My last question before we go to the lightning round, and it's not the lightning round, I'm actually going to check your reflexes, um, is are you in love? No. Because you have a love bracelet. Oh. Um, No, this was given to me by my mom for- So you are in love? Yes. Why'd with my you, family. Why would you discount your mom? Like because that? I guess I was considering just romantic love. No, there's many layers mm-hmm. of love. Mm-hmm. Tell us about so, the yes. love you have for your mom. Um, she's lovely. She's wonderful. She gave this to me <laughs> why for college. Why does it sound graduation. like you're being sarcastic? She's lovely because I was like caught off guard. Oh, okay. Um, Sorry. yeah, mom's great. <laughs> like what? How do you talk about your love for your family? No, she talk about it like you're talking to her. This is so we just went we just like we did such a big U turn. That's good. Um, she's she's this lovely. keeps you honest. She's she's a I, I, now I'm I'm about to just describe her like I'm like, um, why do you love her? Because she's a very honest, strong woman who has done so much work on herself mm. mentally emotionally all of the things and is also consistently doing that work and is like knowing that it's it's going to be a journey for the rest of life that we should always be trying to better ourselves and i think she always operates out of love um which is a beautiful thing she always has really wonderful intentions we had many many great memories wow. growing up that's awesome i yeah, lost my great. mom so it's nice to hear this oh these i'm kind sorry of to stories. hear that yeah yeah 
No, she's but. she's great. Um, she's also on her like world traveler vibe right now. Mm. So she's been going like all over South America over the past few months. Um, nice. And just like exploring because she can work. And remotely. having cool coffees. Having cool coffees. Yeah. Yes. Not yours. No. I don't think she's been able to have mine yet. Oh, she's wow. been out of the country. Yeah. You know, it's funny on my high school yearbook, you know, you're allowed to like write something like mm-hmm. a statement. You know what mine said? What? Shout out to moms. Oh, so oh, I've always you had wrote so- that. Yeah. To I've other had something people. wrong with oh. me for a long time. Oh, okay. Kind of the message. I right. All right. Across. Sure. Okay. Great. Shout out to moms. So there you go. You did it. It's great. She might hear this. Yes. Or she probably will. I think she listens to like everything. That's awesome. Except, God, and would, but sometimes I'm trying not to think about it. Okay, so here I am talking about chlamydia, talking about all of the things, That's okay. which is fine. Like, again, no stigma. Um, but, you know, with your parents, sometimes yeah. it's like, yeah, that's awkward. Yeah. Don't even perceive me doing anything sexual ever. Never. Never. Are right, you ready to check your reflexes? Oh, okay. Okay, wait. Your phone's my phone. down there. <sighs> Are you going to throw it at me? Yes. Okay. Here we go. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, healthiest part of your body. My mind. Shout out to the therapist. Mm -hmm. One part of your body that you wish you could replace. Oh. Um, that I wish I could replace. Can I say like my height? You could say anything you want. Like I don't, I don't, so I guess that would be my legs. Like I wish they were a little longer. Not that I don't know, because then I would be disproportional. I guess just my height. Like, I wish I were a little taller. Your skeletal system. My skeletal system. Okay. But also, I'm happy with my height and I'm not mad. I'm like, actually, interestingly enough, like, height is mostly contributed by your long bones of your skeletal system. So you could say the extension of your long bones. Sure. Sorry. What's one thing that raised your blood pressure this week? Got you mad? Got me mad? Yeah. God, I didn't really, I don't get mad too often. Mm-hmm. Got me mad. I mean, not like throwing stuff mad, but like, ugh. I will say right. What be- gave you the ick? Right. This didn't give me the ick, but it maybe raised my blood pressure right before I got here. I've been in like a slight situation shit for a guy over the past, with a guy for mm-hmm. over the past three months, ever since the end of Thanksgiving. And I got a text like right before I got here that was like, would you mind if we talked later? <gasps> <laughs> and so, so I was, you don't know. So no, I do know. I know what this is going to be. We're ending this situation ship and that's fine. But I was in a very, as I was like coming up the elevator, I was like, okay, get out of that mindset because you need to, <laughs> you, you, you better be in a better place. And then you sat down and we started talking about secretions and secretions. And yeah, so that, but so that this right before this, you up or no, hundred percent. Like I, I, there was a conscious moment halfway through this where I was like, Oh great. I wasn't even thinking about that. I feel good. But that did raise my blood pressure right I, before I, I got here. Understandable. Um, what is the smallest bone in your body? Medical trivia. I'm, I'm, Gonna, can you can you tell me if I'm hot or cold? Because I'm gonna guess it's actually not something in your hands or your feet. Correct. Because those seem too easy. Mm-hmm. It is something. It's the it's in your neck. Is that your and it's at the answer? very top of it, and it's your. Okay. No, like, it's your nose. Your Atlas and Axis. And no, your it's vertebrae. not that. No, it's not that. No, what, um, okay, wait. Your teeth. No, those are those aren't. Not bone. Wait, I know. That's why I was saying that. <laughs> um, there, it's in your knee, elbow. <laughs> in your knee. <laughs> Let's and see it's... how long you can guess before <laughs> you get the body part that it's in. Wait. This is great. Okay. Wait, really? Yeah. Okay. I haven't got it. This it, isn't meant to make you look bad. This is a question that no, no yeah, one yeah, knows no, the answer to. Really. I, I don't care that yeah. I don't know this yeah. right now. Um, actually, oh God, that sounded so rude. Why? I just, but it's oh. not something I've ever studied. That's what I'm saying. This yeah. is not supposed to be. So it's not be, in your hands. This is not, not common feet. knowledge. It is, a, but your knee. No. Not leg. elbow, not knee, not leg, not neck. Face. No. So stomach, no. chest. No. What? I've named all of them. <laughs> no. Wait. Your soul. Yes. Yes. No. Right. It's in your ear. In your ear. That the was the, what I was going to say next. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Stapes. S- where is it? In your ear. But where in your ear? Inner ear. Oh. Yeah. It's like 
It vibrates in there. Mm. Um, that was probably way too complicated wow. for what it needed to be. Have you ever almost died? Um, like, oh, truly almost died? I don't think so. I don't think so. Good. I'm gonna, yeah. I was a, I was a pretty crazy 17 to 19 year old, like with uh, like, you know, the substances and all of those things. Mm -hmm. And so there was probably times I got pretty close, but I, I won't remember them. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm glad you didn't die and I'm glad you came today. I'm so glad. Thank you so well. much. Thank you. Yeah. Did this you, was did great. you have fun? I had so much fun. Was it different than you would have expected? Um, Yes, because I feel like we we really got into the, um, it was, you know, we analyzed, but I still made you laugh, which is all I care yeah, about. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, well, I'm, we got I'm the happy spectrum. you had fun. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Where do you want folks to find you? Well, they should check out Flight Fuel if they haven't yet. Yes. Flightfuelcoffee.com. Um, but also I'm on TikTok as Chris, just at Chris, C-H-R-A-S. Because there are other ways to spell it, apparently. And I'm on Instagram at Chris Olson and on YouTube, Chris Olson. Did you also see the drama that you and I had on TikTok not too long ago? Yes, because you said on my way to dinner with Chris, which was Hemsworth. Haven't heard of him. Um, and a lot of people thought it was me. Yeah, that was cute. But here we are now. Yeah. So we got, you have to make it. We have to make something. I'll invite Chris Hemsworth next time we hang out. Oh, Okay. That would be insane. Sure. Yeah. Great. I know Chris pretty well, though. So that's, that's what I'm be saying. Fine. Yeah. You know, you and Megan and Chris are always hanging out. Yes. Often in Australia. Mm -hmm. He is Australian. He is. Right. Right. Great accent. Great accent. Cool. And on that note. Thank you. Thank you. It's <laughs> great. It seemed like the interview knocked you out because you didn't want to uh, participate in his TikTok that he was shooting out in the living room. What do you mean? He dances a lot and I don't know how to dance. So that ended that. It was a hardcore dance too. Hardcore was, dance. And you did a hardcore dance today when you were boxing. That's true. I actually got hit a lot, but that's okay. Yeah. That's one thing. That's good interview good. though. It he, was good. He tries to downplay his strengths, but he has many of those and- the way he shares them with people is very useful. I think we need to do that more often. I love his genuineness. Like he's mm -hmm. like, I don't know anything about dieting, so I'm not going to make recommendations. That's what we need. Yeah, he was funny. He didn't feel fake. Yeah. He felt very real. I felt really bad. He said that he had that text from that guy just as yeah. he showed up. Like who knows? Oh no, that could totally throw you for the whole, <laughs> yeah. the whole interview. But he was cool for the interview, so that's good. Yeah, and the uh, the STI conversation I thought was really really valuable. Really, it was valuable. really ground like the f interview was really sort of silly up top, mm -hmm. and then it we really grounded it. And I think that was really important talking about getting rid of the stigma yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of positive health things that I didn't expect to come out of that. So that's good. Yeah. Um, what else is going on? It's been a busy week. Uh, current events wise, there was a few articles that I want to chat about because. They're going to have substantial impact if they do occur. And I'm talking about Section 230, which is a Supreme Court case that's being heard right now that could potentially influence social media as a whole. Are we going into a legal, legal video? We're right going now? into legal, legal video, but I'm <laughs> becoming a legal eagle myself to learn about it because I'm so scared. Basically, the Supreme Court will hear a case that could impact how social media platforms can make recommendations of content. And all the social media companies currently use algorithms, which is essentially a form of recommendation. And those recommendations could be stopped because right now, if YouTube recommends a video and there's something bad in it that someone wants to sue over, they don't sue YouTube, they sue the creator. But this potential Section 230 case could make it so that you could sue YouTube for the information that they recommended to you. And then, therefore, the algorithms will change as a whole. So all social media platforms. Yeah. Will so be let's different. clarify that. If many of you are perhaps watching this on YouTube right now, hello. Um, and if you are, there's probably a series of videos alongside the one you're watching, and those are what Mike means when he says videos that are being recommended to you. Those videos are not there by accident. Yeah. Those are actually uh, very intentionally placed there because the algorithm, the the sort of machine running behind YouTube behind the scenes, has is predicting you will be interested in clicking and watching hopefully all of, if not just one of those videos. I think most people know the FYP, the for you page. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what that is. It's a machine learned algorithm. 
But why tune to you? Why would the government? Why would anyone want to get rid of this at all? Because it seems so beneficial to the viewer. It brings them more content that they want. Yeah. So basically, there there was protection within the, within the First Amendment that said these social media companies are not publishers because we as the creators are the publishers, so we should be liable. But in order to um, keep them in check, various different parts of the government and people on the left and on the right don't want social media companies to be spreading misinformation or putting out information that perhaps favors one side or the other. So for various different reasons, they're all very angry at the social media platforms for not being liable for the things that they put out. And sometimes they're, they don't do anything wrong and there's no need to sue them, but sometimes there could be some true misinformation on there that they will now be liable for. And as a result, those companies, in order to protect themselves, will just stop recommending. And because of that, that could be really scary for those and, on social media. And it media. could have uh, significantly negative impacts on creators, especially new creators, because mm -hmm. the way that new YouTubers get recognized is the algorithm says, hey, you've made a new video. Let me push this out to some people who don't follow you. Yeah. And that's how you discover new people on YouTube. Yes. So the algorithm basically will take a video irrespective of how many subs someone has and show it to millions of people if it's good and people enjoy it. And if it can't do that, <laughs> then those new people will have trouble finding an audience. Uh, and for those of us who have an audience that has subscribed to us, we would be at an advantage, or so it seems. We're also living in the land of hypotheticals when we talk about this. But again, very scary, a, a lot of unknowns. Some good things can come out of this. My prediction is that the Supreme Court won't take action, and they'll leave it up to Congress to decide. And hopefully with some proper education, Congress can sort of understand the implications of their actions and not make it so that creators are punished they're doing a good job. I feel bad for these legislators and judges. Like how, if you're a 80 year old congressman- You should retire. Uh, maybe you should retire. We can talk about age limits <laughs> in the House of Representatives, sure. But like, how are you supposed to be savvy enough to understand what the law should be regarding the algorithm of YouTube? They, YouTube's only 15 years old. Because the goal of- someone who represents the people of the U.S. is to be versed on these issues. You don't have to be an expert on them, but you need to have people on your team who can help you understand them to be at the level of an expert. And if you don't have someone on your team like that, it's probably your fault because you're not a good leader to get them on board to explain it to you. And it seems like so many people in Congress say the wildest things in these interviews when they question Mark Zuckerberg or whoever from uh, the platforms because the questions they ask seem all over the place. You could probably make the case that the current state of social media on the internet is either the greatest it will ever be because things like Section 230 can come in and wreck it all up, mm -hmm. or it's the worst it's ever going to be because they're eventually going to legislate it in a way that creates a healthier ecosystem. I think both of those are just as likely, and I really don't have a guess for which side it is. Spectrum. Yeah. Is my answer. Of course. <laughs> Always. Of yeah. course. Wading through the thriving yeah, in the, the sea of nuance. I love swimming in the sea of nuance. But I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. And there's some arguments to be made to removing it that are smart. But if you're going to remove that layer of protection, then you need to institute some other layer of protection so that when I search on a, a public search engine, pizza, you, you give me a pizza option near me, not the one in... Antarctica. Yeah, it, like if you're looking through Google Maps, for example, and you want to find a pizza restaurant, you type in pizza, and yeah, why would you wouldn't want search results from anywhere that isn't local to you? And they're able to give you those local results because they're using your data. Yeah. So obviously there are benefits to them being able to do yeah. this. So but there's also probably examples of it going way too far that we need to rein in. Yeah. So spectrum, <laughs> nuance. Um, thank you, Dr. Mike Esquire. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> legal. I was like, who's Dr. Mike Esquire? There's um, probably one out there. Oh, no, wait, there is. Is there a Dr. Mike? Or there's a it wouldn't be Dr. Mike yeah, Lawyer. Yeah, there's a Mike the Lawyer or something. Yeah, probably. Didn't we do a collab with them? With Legal Legal? Oh, Law by Mike? Is yeah, that Law the guy's Mike, name? Law yeah. by Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Good stuff. Speaking of wading through the sea of nuance, how about we wade through the sea of five star reviews on Apple yes, Podcasts? We need we need more five star reviews and throw in questions in those five star reviews so I can answer them like I'm about to do right now. I have a question for you from French Fry Pie. Mm, before I get that to doesn't it, sound good. Before I get to it, what is your recommendation on people eating French fry pies? I make no recommendation because it's TBD based on their goals and their current health status and all this stuff. But in general, it just doesn't sound appetizing. It doesn't. It, it, is it savory? Is it sweet? I don't know. Uh, French Fry Pie says, great podcast with so many fascinating guests. Hey, Dr. Mike, guests. 
I like to go barefoot whenever possible. What are the pros and cons with going barefoot all of the time? Well, cons, very obvious. <laughs> you get scratches, infections, tetanus, unless you have your tetanus vaccine up to date. Um, but the pros have been sort of twisted in some of this alternative medical space where they say like, it's grounding you, it's connecting you to the earth. And if you want to say that in the spiritual sense, that's fine. But then when people start making claims about the electric load of your body and what it actually means, I've seen no evidence to support that. So I would say if you enjoy it and you could do it safely, by all means do it. Um, but just know that you're taking a risk every time you do it. Also, when you do it without footwear and you go on like a run or something, you can strengthen your leg, your calf muscle, all of that, because you're running without support, you could also develop a stress fracture. So you got to like weigh the pros and cons for yourself as opposed to on a general level. How about those shoes people wear that have the little like fingers for your toes that are sort of like, oh, oh barefoot yeah. shoes? Yeah, yeah, Do you have a, a medical opinion on those at all? Um, My high school I think a lot of them don't have them. thick soles because they're supposed to be like, you're wearing nothing. Mm -hmm. And that we've seen to be problematic for so many people that may have a very high arch or have no arch and have a flat foot, um, don't run with proper form. And as a result, they get more injuries. In general, cushioning feels good and it's probably good for your knees. So I, I like the cushioning. Okay. French I max cushion on my shoes. I went to high school with a max cushion. French fry pie. I hope that answers you. your question. Yes. Take us home. Yeah. Uh, I, I really appreciate you listening and watching. If you're on the YouTube channel, The Checkup with Chris Olson. Thanks for watching. As always, stay happy and healthy.